It's time to brag, be rich and generous. Brag Radio is hosted by best-selling real estate investing author Larry Goins and co-host Candace. For the next hour, they'll show you proven and effective ways you can be successful in real estate. From the WBT Studios, the flagship station of the Brag Radio Network, here are your hosts, the rock stars of real estate, Larry and Candace. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Chad. He's awesome. <laughs> Larry and Candace. I got to write a book, though. I want to be like best selling something. There you go. Yeah, I need to do something. You could do that. Because you get all this stuff in front of your name and then, and Candace. <laughs> <laughs> and Candace. <laughs> Candace is here too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chad. <laughs> That's funny. I feel so special. Well, hey, you know, one day, one day she came to work, and you know how, like, uh, some of these, uh, like, I think it's Coke has, like, names on the side of a can. Yeah. You know, she came to the office one day with one that said Sidekick on it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. We took a picture. It would have been even better if I had gotten the one that said Legend and the one that said Sidekick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that now, did true. you specifically, like, pick through them to find it? or was No, it was, it was on the front. Yeah, okay. it was just on the front of the thing. I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then uh, that's when we, man, that was a long time ago. I have a picture of that. But that's when we were doing the um, Brag Days. It was one of the mornings we were going to host people at in office. office for the Brag Day. At yeah. office. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's that was true. a long time we're ago. We're going to start that up again soon. I don't know who's going to do that. <laughs> we are. We already talked about it. When it's did gonna, we talk about gonna that? It's going to happen. We talked about it just the other See, day. It's no, going to be next quarter. This is why all of our conversations need to be recorded. All of them. Everything we say should go on the air or recorded in some type of something. This. We did talk about this. We did. <laughs> we said, as soon as I get the next course done. Right. Oh, that's when I sent back. That's there what you, you go. So here's how this went, Chad. I sent him and everybody else listening. Um, he sends me an email. He's like, and the topic is idea. That's in the subject line. And I mean, honestly, I she waited gets about, about three of those a day. I, I waited about an hour to open it <laughs> because I was like, I'm not dealing with this right now. So um, when I did open it and look at it, he's like, I've got this idea. And he goes through and he's talking about, you know, this um, this meetup kind of a thing. And um, I was like, and all I did, I wrote back like one sentence. He had this whole layout thing. And I wrote back and I was like, okay, what are we going to stop to be able to start this? And that was it. Wow, your buzzkill. She thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least she didn't say no. So I yeah. said, I said, so I gave myself an incentive. As soon as I finish this, then we can start it. So then he writes me that and I wrote back. I was like, okay, add it to the rash list. And we'll talk about it next quarter. Th- that's like a whole rash of stuff I want to do. Right? Okay. So, yes, yeah, so a rash list. Is called a rash list for a reason. One, because Southern, you know, and rash is like really, whenever you say a it's a, yeah, a whole lot of stuff. Two, I, it's a rash because it annoys the crap out of me. Like, and I can't do anything to fix it. There's no calamine lotion for it. There's nothing that's going <laughs> to, there's nothing that's going to help with this rash. No it doesn't go away. Enough. There's no Tylenol strong enough for no, it. No, right? it doesn't go away. And it just keeps getting bigger and more agitating because there's more stuff on it. So that's why we do that. Okay. But, but, we, but we have given up a few things. No, we have. And it yeah. definitely having him on a list like that does a couple things. It helps him put in perspective um, the amount of uh, staff, honestly, we would Effort. need to put this thing in action. And then also, um, okay, if we're going to pick one of these things, are we in, um, in a uh, state of union for lack of a better word state of the union to be able to incorporate this with everything else that we've got going on in the whirlwind so i would suggest everybody get a rash list there you have it <laughs> we have one it's a long list yeah completely I had, separate I had to from upgrade the my hard drive this. just to fit it all i'm telling you <laughs> this is another thing he's got uh we listened to that book the one thing i think we talked about that Maybe. a couple weeks back too um gary the, keller i believe yeah the one thing just land one plane at a time. Just one thing. If I did this one thing, it would push me. So he started a one thing list. And there's <laughs> tons of stuff on the one thing. I, look, I, I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to focus. I'm going to have one thing that I'm going to do. And You don't and need I, a sheet of paper to have started, one thing. I started a one thing list. My one thing. And like 15 minutes later, I got like three pages. I'm like, what, what the heck is the point? <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> it's just an extended version of the rash list. <laughs> That's crazy. So you're listening to Brag Radio. 
leading the world to be rich and generous. It's more the, than just real estate. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's supposed to be real estate investing in. That's what we do. We teach you how to invest in real estate, whether you want to be active or passive. And then we encourage you to go out and be generous and help others as well, right? That's right. Our avenue or our vehicle um, for rich and generous has been real estate. But the things that we go through on this show is more than just about real estate. There's, um, you know, all ki- all types of stuff that falls into being a real estate investor, whether you can do it um, full time, part time or spare time. Larry's favorite phrase. <laughs> well, one of them. Yeah. As you're looking at me as you're right. saying it, like, I'm saying you're lying. And the other one is, <laughs> the other one, all of our models, all of our models across the board are the sap- safest, easiest, fastest ways to get started in real estate <laughs> investing. Uh, it depends on which one we're talking about at the time. It's right? all of them. Just so you know, every way that we have to invest in real estate is the exactly. safest, easiest, fastest, quickest. Now, last week on the show, we went through all the different ways, or all the, not ways, but all the different reasons we love HUD. The benefits right. of HUD. Advantages right? and things, yeah. Yeah, we, and we talked about a lot of different things, and you can go back and listen to them. I mean, a lot of things were, you know, there's no marketing, no negotiating, no phone calls, no direct mail, no bandit signs, no advertising. Most of them are listed below market. They provide a PCR, which that's a property condition report, so they let you know all the major <clears> things that are wrong with a the house. They've been cleaned out. The carpet's been removed if they're smelly. You know, you can buy them at a deep discount. And there's no deed restrictions. You can literally buy and sell a HUD house the same day and make as much as you can on it, right? And there's lots of data available. And I gave out some websites where you could go and get some of that data information as well. And for you guys to listen to the full show that he's talking about that we did last week, it's on bragradio.com. Or if you follow us on Facebook, Mm -hmm. facebook.com forward slash Larry H. Goins. Facebook.com forward slash Larry H. Goins. Each week we post the episodes there so you can watch them or listen to them there as well. Now, this week what we, we're going to talk about is we're going to dive deeper into it, and I want to show you some of the strategies that we use to buy HUD houses at a deep, deep discount, right? Part two of the two-parter. The two-parter. <laughs> the sequel. <laughs> That's funny right there. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, there are a lot of of benefits as as we talked about last week, and you should go back and check out that show. But there's also specific strategies. Now I hear students sometimes, you know, they say, "Larry, I'm thinking about getting your book." What do you mean thinking about? It? Just get it. Come on. Even if you buy it in the bookstore or on the Amazon, yeah, and you pay ten or twenty bucks. But if you're listening to the show, you can get it for free. Just call Candace eight seven seven Larry Go. Anyway. You know, well, Larry, I'm thinking about getting your book. You talk about you can <laughs> buy hot houses at deep discounts. You know, well, there's no hot houses in my area, right? Well, <laughs> you know, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me. People say, well, it won't work where I live, or it won't work based on this, or it won't work based on that. Really, it never ceases to amaze you? It, well, listen, I've heard it all. I was point, getting ready right? to say, I don't think anything like that would, yeah. But what I want to do on this episode is I want to go in and show you some specific strategies and techniques that we use to be able to buy HUD houses at 50, 40, 30. I've even bought HUD houses at 20% of list price. Now, don't get me wrong. HUD is not all we do, right? No, that's not. We do HUD. We buy MLS properties. We buy properties from direct mail, from pay-per-click advertising, from Facebook marketing. We have bird dogs out there. We put out bandit signs. We do a lot of different things to get deals. But when we come back from the break, I want to talk about some specifics that you need to look for to be able to buy HUD houses at a discount. And there's about 10 different ones of them, okay? 10 different ones of them. 10 different ones. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. There's about 10 of them, right, that I want to go over specifically. So in the meantime, call Cadmus, right? 877-LARRY-GO. We can get a copy of the HUD Homes Half Off book as long as well as the Day Trader book, investing in, what is the title of that book? You mean they can get it. We already have it. We already have it. They can <laughs> they get can it. They can get it. Investing in real estate. What is the name of the day trader book? It's getting just, started in <laughs> getting real estate started day trading. Getting started in real estate day trading. Getting Man, started in me. real estate day trading. I got all tongue tied. And the then tagline, homes half off. The tagline is how to buy and sell houses the same day using, using the, the internet. internet. That's right. <laughs> 877 Larry Go. And I can get the digital kit out to your email address. You can also schedule an office tour, come by and pick up the physical kit. 
So 877-LARRY-GO will get me on the phone. Text the word B-R-A-G to 803-897-6063. Welcome back. Bragg Radio. Investing in real estate to be rich and generous. Live from beautiful Uptown Studios at yep. 1 Julian Price Place. Uptown. From the flagship station of the Panthers. Is that right, Chad? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, you're going to ask for forgiveness if I wasn't. And today it's HUD <laughs> Part 2. <laughs> Oh, man. So you guys, um, some of you have given me a call already. What? I want to hear the rest of the song. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Then listen to the radio. This is talk radio. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) This is News Talk Radio, 99.3 FM, 1110 AM. There you go. You're going like. (laughs) I'm reading my little thing on my mic. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. 1110 AM. (laughs) You're so funny. <laughs> the little juber on top of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like you were looking cross-eyed there for a minute. <laughs> it's because it's so close. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh, it's so close. So close to my face. That's too funny. Anyway, That's so too funny. some of you guys have called 877-LARRY-GO. Thank you for that. Um if I'm not the one that speaks to you, it will be Zenobia in our office. She's helping me take um, a lot of the brag calls because they are flooding me. So I asked her to help. So if you get a call back from Zenobia or if she answers the phone, she does work with us in our office in Lake Wiley. There you go. And we're talking this week, and we talked last week about the benefits of HUD. This week we're going to dive in a little deeper and talk about a few of the specific strategies that we use to buy HUD houses <laughs> at deep, deep discounts. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Candace can't get over looking at the little juber oh. on the mic. What do you call these things, Chad? Mic flags. A mic flag. <laughs> She's looking at the mic flag. <laughs> so close. That's funny. Ugh. We need some that say brag. Where can we buy these? Internet. I don't think we can the switch internet. them out. Can we That's switch good. them out when that, we come in? That Google knows everything, don't it? Can we switch them out when we come in? I don't know. You gotta, we'll have to ask the uh, screw this the technicians. Right here. Yeah, I don't know. Because I doubt work. we'll ever be big enough to have brag like underneath the, <laughs> under the panther. I want to get a little sticker right here. <laughs> put a little brag right here. A little sticker on the end. Or you could just put a piece of paper and then just put it around it of during the mic flag. Make yeah. a note of that, Candace. Mic flags. Yeah, we're gonna get some mic flag sleeves. <laughs> 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 That's funny. All right, so we're talking about some strategies to buy HUD houses at deep, deep discounts. One of the first things that I want to talk about in these strategies is, number one, look for inconsistent number of bedrooms and baths. I can't tell you how many, because I haven't kept track, of the houses (laughs) that I have bought because on HUD's website, it might have said it's a two-bedroom, but it was really a three It might have also said it was a one bath and it was really a two. Or maybe it said it was a three, two, but it was really a four, three, you know, four bedroom, three bath or four bedroom, two bath. So I want you to look for inconsistent number of bedrooms and baths. Now, where are you going to compare this information to? Right. What you can do is look up on other websites like Zillow.com or Realtor.com, or you can even look it up at the tax assessor's office, right, to see what the house is being taxed on, right? So you can look that up, and you can look that up at any county um, county website, like Mecklenburg County, York County, South Carolina, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> so you can look it up there to determine and find out the inconsistencies in the bedrooms or baths. Now, why is this important? The reason is... I have a feeling you're going to tell us. I am going to tell you. <laughs> Because think about it. What if somebody's on HUD's website and they say, I only want a 3-2. That's, I want at least three bedrooms, at least two baths. Well, HUD might have, you know, have listed it as a two-bedroom or listed it as a one-bath, so <clears throat> it's not going to show up in their search result. Right. Right? So, you know, if you don't really know that, if you're not aware of that, 
then it's not going to show up in your search result and you might miss a really, really good deal that they priced as a two-bedroom or they priced as a one-bath and it was really a three-bedroom or a two-bath. Does yeah, that make sense, Everybody makes Candace? mistakes. It does. <clears throat> Especially the government, <clears throat> right? right? And, that, and we are talking about HUD, okay? So that's the first thing. Look for inconsistent number of bedrooms and baths. The second thing I want you to look at, right, is look for inconsistent square footage, Okay, look for inconsistent square footage. Now, at HUDHomestore.com, they always list the square footage of the property. However, it's not always accurate, right? Now, you can also verify this information at other websites as well. And you can also verify it at the tax assessor's office and see what the property is being taxed on, how what square footage it's being taxed on, right? Once again, once again, if someone is searching and say they want at least a 1,500-square-foot house, um, well, if HUD has has listed it as, you know, 1,200 and it's really 1,700, right, they're 500 square feet off. Right. It's not going to show up in that person's search results. I actually saw a property one time that was listed as 900 square feet and it ended up being 1,900 they left the one it's off. just a one. They left That's like off. half a house. <laughs> Do they ever make errors the other way where they say like there's three bedrooms and there's only two? <laughs> Wow, that's a really, really good question, Chad, and absolutely they do. That's why it's very, very, very important <laughs> that you verify all the information, right? And you can do that through the tax assessor or through other sources as well, okay? Um so that's two. Number one, look for inconsistent number of bedrooms and baths. Number two, look for inconsistent square footage, okay? Number three, more days on the market equal a bigger discount. Did you know that, Candace? I did. The longer that it sits there, um, more willing and ready to get rid of it. That's exactly right. Now, with HUD, just to let you guys know, with HUD, when, the, when a HUD house first goes on the market... It's typically, and I say typically because there's exceptions to every rule, but typically a HUD house is only available to owner-occupied buyers, right? No investors can bid on the house until after the initial bidding period, Right. okay? <clears throat> now, during that initial bidding period, which is typically 15 days, I've seen it anywhere from zero days where it's available to investors day one. Right. I've also seen it up to 30 days. Now, depending on the market conditions, you know, how hot the market is or how cold the market is, it might be anywhere from 5 to 30 days. But right now, just about everywhere that I've talked to people that are bidding on HUD houses, it's 15 days. That's what okay? we're seeing the most of. Yeah, exactly. And we're in three states ourselves. Plus, we talk to a lot of students and help them set up their own HUD bidding business now, in I their heard own the, state. On that same note, I heard um, – Heard on the phone one of uh, one of the students said the other day or was asking the difference is there a specific period for nonprofits to bid or are they inside the window for owner occupied? Well, um, nonprofits there's nonprofit and government agencies. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, they can typically bid during that exclusive period. See, a bidding a bidding is called or a property listing period is called exclusive right. during that first 15 days, which means only owner-occupied borrowers can bid on it or buyers can bid on it, as well as, if I'm not mistaken, government agencies and nonprofits, okay? After that, the listing is what's called extended. It's an For extended everybody. listing. But listen, guys, <clears throat> it's not that complicated when you go to HUD's website. When you go to HUD's website, all you got to do, and you're looking at properties, all you got to do is select your buyer type as investor, right? Because here's the different buyer types there are. There's owner-occupant. There's investor. There's nonprofit. There's government agency. There's good neighbor next door, which means HUD offers some incentives, a small discounts to first responders like firemen and policemen and teachers, and teachers mm -hmm. right? There's a called good neighbor next door, but you have to live in the property, right? And then there's what's called dollar homes. Now, trust me, you don't want a dollar home. <laughs> they don't. There's only about five of them in the country at any given time, and they're in the worst areas. They're the worst properties, and they can't even give them away. And you got to move into it. And you got to move into <laughs> it, right? Exactly. That's right. And, and I've got 
I've got seven more that we need to go go through. So when we come back, we're going to jump right back in. Right, Candace? Yep. You guys give me a call to get the Hud Home Half Off book and goes into detail, a lot more detail than we can cover here today. 877-LARRY-GO or text the word B-R-A-G to 803-897-6063. 877-LARRY-GO. We'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> you guys are going crazy today with this whole uh, air musician thing happening. We're going to bring in some real instruments sometime, aren't we? You keep threatening to do that. <laughs> I know, right? What are you going to bring in, Chad? Bongos. <laughs> Bongos. <laughs> yeah. A djembe drum. <laughs> right? There you sure. Go. That's funny. That's funny. So you're listening to Bragg Radio, leading the world to be rich and generous. We teach you how to invest in real estate and then encourage you to go out there and brag. Be rich and generous. Help others be a blessing with your blessings that we have taught you how to make money in real estate investing in, right? That's right. We're talking about some specific (laughs) strategies that we use to buy HUD houses at deep, deep discounts. The first one was look for inconsistent number of bedrooms and baths. Right, because sometimes HUD might list it as a three bedroom; it's really a four, or they might list it as a one bath and it's really a two. Look for inconsistent square footage. Uh, you know, I had a deal a while back; they listed it as nine hundred square feet. It was actually nineteen hundred. It's not going to show up in the search result if you're looking for a house, you know, uh, over nine hundred square feet. Right. Uh, The next thing we talked about was more days on the market equal a bigger discount. Now, I will tell you this. I actually bought a house. It's been about six months ago. I bought a house for 35% of list price that was on the market for 17 days. I don't know how I did it. I do know this. It never, ever, ever happens. It's the only time it's ever happened, and it probably never happened again. But I do know this. As soon as they accepted my 35% bid, even though it had only been on the market for 17 days, I said, whatever we do, make sure we get the paperwork in, we get the deposit in. They have no reason to cancel that, right? So typically, you you start seeing them take bigger discounts at 60, 75, and even 90 days on the market, okay? Even 90 days on the market, all right? Now, the fourth thing we look for is mispriced properties, mispriced properties. Like we talked last week, and go back and look at braggradio.com to look at uh, at, at uh, the archive shows, and we talked last week about a property that we purchased that it was listed for 44000 I think forty four five, and we picked it up for 45601 And, um, you know, we didn't pay much over, like $1,000 or something over it, but um, it, it, we paid 45 something and we sold it for eighty nine nine, and we didn't even touch it. It was grossly underpriced, right? Yeah. In fact, we had to bid on it the day that it became available to investors, right? Right. The day it became available, you know, we, our, our guy in the office at the time, he called up the listing agent, and the listing agent said, I have three investors bidding on this one today. That's right. And that's why we bid over list to make sure that we got the property. So look for mispriced properties because it's not unusual for HUD to misprice a property and price it a lot lower than it should be, okay? Number five, number five, look for, okay, look for problems that can be fixed. Look for problems that can be fixed. You know, like maybe there's something wrong with with a driveway or something wrong with, you know, uh, sheetrock or a kitchen or bath. You know, things that you want to stay away from would be things like the neighborhood. You, you can't you can't fix a neighborhood. Right. Not overnight. Anyway. Not overnight. Not overnight. You can't <laughs> fix a neighborhood. Uh, the other thing is um, you can't fix a neighborhood, but you also can't fix it. Let's say if you if the property is on what we call a flag lot. Okay, what is a flag lot? You might be asking. You well, might gonna, be asking. Well, that. I'm going to tell you. Go ahead and okay? tell us. Tell us. So, just picture a flag tell on a flagpole. Okay, picture a flag on a flagpole. The lot is the flag portion. The flagpole would be the driveway leading to the road. So, if you have just a narrow driveway that you don't own anything on each side of the driveway, all you own is the driveway, and then it opens up to the flag portion where the house is. That's called a flag lot. 
People don't like that. In other words, somebody could build a house right in front of your house, right? Right. But in you can't front of be your landlocked. <clears throat> you can't be landlocked, right? So how could they build? You mean on either side? Like if it was wooded on either side of your driveway and you it, don't own that, they could build. Well, in it doesn't wooded. really matter. Just say the flagpole starts at the road and goes into <clears throat> the lot. Right, right, right. And then you have the the flag that is where your house is. I get it. Somebody could build that their whole front of their lot is in front of yours and it attaches to the road, right? So they could build in front of you, Okay. right? So in other words, you're going to be behind somebody else's house. So people don't like flags, flag lots. So, you know, that's an example of a problem that cannot be fixed, yep. okay? That's an example of a problem that cannot be fixed. You also want to make sure that you don't buy a property that's landlocked, okay? We actually had a HUD house one time that it, it was landlocked, right? It was, and, yeah. And, and we ended up not buying it because, luckily, the guy who got foreclosed on came out and talked to us uh, <clears throat> whenever we, are, we, we were, went to inspect the property. We had it under contract. And he said, uh, how are you going to get to your house? <laughs> and the guy who worked with us at the time said, well, what are you talking about? He said, well, you don't own the driveway. I own the driveway. You own the house back here off the road, right? Mm-hmm. Own the house and whatever, an acre of land or whatever. But I own this. And he did not get a mortgage on it, an FHA mortgage on that other portion, right? So he actually, it, the house was landlocked, right? So we let HUD know about it, and they let us cancel the contract and get our deposit back, which is unusual, <laughs> by the way. But Yeah, um, to get any deposit back from HUD is unusual. Exactly. But they allowed us to do that. So look for problems that can be fixed. You know, you don't want to deal with, with major foundation issues, structural problems. If a house is sinking or a foundation is cracked around it, you, you don't want to deal with that. If you, if you have a roof that's caving in or, you know, leaking really bad, just don't don't deal with that stuff. You don't have to. There's plenty of other good deals out there. Right, Candace? That's right. That's exactly right. So look for problems that can be fixed, right? Not problems that can't be. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is look outside of major MSAs, right? Um, Just for example, we live in the Charlotte, North Carolina MSA, Charlotte, North Carolina Metropolitan Statistical Area. Now, Charlotte MSA is going to cover not only Charlotte, right, the city limits of Charlotte, but it's going to cover some of Gaston County, some of York County, some of Union County, uh, maybe some of Iredale County. But it's it's the city of Charlotte plus the surrounding bedroom communities. Mm-hmm. A lot of people call it the bedroom communities, right? Sleepy towns is what I call it. Yeah, like where people, <clears throat> you know, maybe they live in Rock Hill and they work in Charlotte. Or it's they an live easy in Gastonia commute, you know. and work in Charlotte. Right. That's what an MSA is. So look outside of the major MSAs. I will tell you this. We, we, we live in the Charlotte MSA. It's been over four years since we have bought a house in Charlotte. An investment property, yeah. yeah. In fact, at the last three-day event, I was showing a luxury home that we bought and sold <laughs> over at Ballantine Country Club. Right. That was the one that had fire damage. It was like a $2 million house. Right. And it had like a million dollars worth of fire damage. So we actually picked it up for, I think it was 350 and we sold it for 395 or something, you know, to somebody that paid cash, and then they were just going to fix it up they and were move into live in it, it yeah. right? But they were going to probably put another million dollars in it, and it was about somewhere between a million and a half and two million dollar house. So anyway, but so that's the last one. That's what you were getting. That to. was the that's last, the last house. property we bought in that the MSA. That was the last house we bought in the Charlotte area, and somebody actually brought it to us at the RIA Group. So join your local real estate investors association, right? Yeah, there's one uh, right here in Charlotte. It's Metrolina. Metrolanaria. Metrolanaria.com, right? Is it uh, dot, yeah, dot, it is dot com, I believe. Metrolanaria.com or dot org, one of those two. I think it's dot org. <laughs> might be. Might be. Anyway, and JC will get back, you. He'll take care of you. There you there. go. When we come back, I've got four more specific strategies that we use to buy HUD houses at a deep, deep discount, right? Four more? Look at that. You timed it appropriately because we only have one more segment for you to get through those four. Usually you're running behind. So, wow. you know, you know. We'll see how he does with that, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, you guys give me a call, 877-LARRY-GO, and I can get the uh, investor's kit out to your email address, or you can text the word BRAG 
to 803-897-6063. When we get on the phone, we can talk about um, maybe scheduling an office tour for you to come in and pick up the physical kit, talk about our upcoming three-day events and where those are going to be around the country. I know there's people listening to us uh, all over the country. <clears throat> so we can talk about where our next three days are going to be so you guys can come out and um, join, one, join us for one of those. What? You guys, give me a call, 877-LARRY-GO. Killing me, guys. You're killing me. What is this? What is that? Welcome back to Frag Radio. See, this is the type of music. I don't know what we left with a while ago, but this is the music. <laughs> I know, right. This is what we're used to. Right Frag here. Radio, investing in real estate to be rich and generous. We have been talking about HUD. A lot of you guys have already called me to get your investor kits. Uh, remember, you can send questions to info at bragradio.com as well, and we'll get those answered and back out to you, and we might even talk about them on the show Exactly. Be sure and follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Larry H. Goins. H is for HUD. <laughs> HUD guy. Larry HUD That's guy Goins. Awesome. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, be sure and follow us. I would love to friend you, but I have 5,000 friends already. That's all that Facebook allows. So, so that's I not can't be happen. your friend, but you can follow me, unfortunately. All right. Unfortunately, what? I can't be your friend, <laughs> but you can follow me. On Facebook.com forward slash Larry H. Goins. That is our Hug business, guy Goins. That is our business page. On business. Not the personal profile, right? Yeah, the personal profile can't have <clears throat> any more friends. You're friended I can't, out. I, I'm at my friend limit. I've reached my limit of friends. I, I can't have no more. You need to purge. <laughs> I need to purge some friends. Yeah. <laughs> you need to purge. <clears throat> That's funny. So we're talking about we the different been. strategies that we use to buy HUD houses at deep, deep, deep discounts. Now you right? told them, yes, you told them you had four more. What are the ones that we've been over already? Well, we've been over a uh, look for inconsistent number of bedrooms and baths, look for inconsistent square footage, more days on the market equal bigger discount, and typically around 60, 75 to 90 days, they start uh, wanting to take bigger discounts, right? Uh, look for mispriced properties, properties that are already listed well below their actual value, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, look outside of major MSAs. Like if you live in a metropolitan statistical area like Charlotte or Denver, Colorado or Jacksonville, Florida, look outside in the smaller towns, right? Um, and so the next one I want to talk about is uninsured properties equal a bigger discount. Now, what it, you might be asking, what is an uninsured property? An uninsured property is basically a property where HUD will not allow you to get another FHA loan to buy the property unless Why would it, they it's what we it? call uh, <clears throat> unless it is a um, a rehab loan that they offer for owner occupied buyers, right? Owner occupied buyers. <clears throat> Correct. So why would they? Why would they? Why would this even be a thing? Well, it's because you. In other words, you can't buy this house and get an FHA loan. Right. For a second time. They've already done it once. They're not going to do it again. Because the house needs more work, right? Okay. The house needs more work. Now, some of the properties just need a little bit of work, maybe paint, maybe a little landscaping, and they'll allow the borrower that gets an FHA loan to escrow some of that money, and okay. then they do the work, and, and it's not going to be much. It's going to be like 1000 or $1,500 worth of work, right? Okay. But- so if you find a property that's an uninsured property, and it'll say so in the listing on the right-hand side when you look at a property, it'll say insured or uninsured. Uninsured just basically means, means the property needs more work than normal. Right? Okay. Okay. So, so that's going to equal a bigger discount, right? So in other words, you can build more of what's called sweat equity, right? Does that make sense, Candace? Building sweat equity does. <clears throat> There you go. I didn't know that they did that, though. I didn't know that they had uninsured <clears throat> properties. I guess that hasn't – has that come up with any that we've tried to buy? I, I talk about it every time I talk about HUD houses. No, I, I get I that, my... but I tune you out when you're talking. But huh? I'm talking about <laughs> huh? in the office with you us. You tune me out? Half the time, yeah. Thank you, Candace. You're welcome. Appreciate you. All right. Now – Are you eight... seriously trying to say that you don't do that to me? I, I listen to you. Half the time. I... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to move on. I got okay. three more to All go right. before right. the end of this show. 
Go right? ahead. Go the, ahead. Number eight. Get it, number girl. Number eight is what? <laughs> what is that about? The num the eighth one. The eighth strategy for buying HUD houses at deep discount is bid on every house every day, right? That's what we do. Now, remember, HUD is a daily auction, <clears throat> okay? It's a daily auction, and you bid on every HUD house every single day. Just because you bid on it today doesn't mean you shouldn't bid on it tomorrow, right? right. That's doesn't right. mean they won't take it tomorrow, Right. We actually bid on every single HUD house every single day in North Carolina, South Carolina and Georgia. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be thinking, well, Larry, what's the point in me bidding if I'm if I'm in Charlotte or if I'm in Raleigh or Wilmington or wherever in the Carolinas or Georgia? Why should I even bother? Listen, we've got acquisition people. We have salespeople. We have closing people. We have an office. We have overhead. I got to buy a property and probably about 15 to 20 percent less than you do. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to this, I got to buy a property a lot less than you do for me to make any money on it because I have a lot of mouths to feed. Right, Candace? That's right. We've got a lot of overhead. And I'm not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's not just me, but I mean, you know, I'm not cheap. That's true. Just that saying. True. That is true. So, um, so anyway. You want to bid on every single house every single day. That's very, very important. And and the key is you want to find an agent that will work with you and will put those bids in or allow you to put the bids in for them. Okay? Now, the ninth thing is look for price reductions and back on the market. Look for price reductions <clears throat> and back on the market. What's a price reduction? Well, with HUD houses as well as most other bank-owned properties – if the property hasn't sold in in around 30 days, they're typically – now, there's exceptions to every rule, and it doesn't work every time just like this. But typically, in about 30 days, they're going to drop the price. If it's listed <clears> for fifty nine nine, they might drop it to fifty four nine. If it's listed for 165 they might drop it to 160 or 159 nine or something. Yeah. So they're going to drop it, you know, five to ten thousand dollars ish, just to try to get some traction. Right, right, right. And it's going to show back up at the top of the list when people do the search of activity mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or or whatever. Right. So look for price reductions. And, and the great thing also is those price reductions happen typically just about every thirty days ish. Yeah, that's right? what we've noticed. <clears throat> so. By the time the property has been on the market 60 days, it might have had two price reductions. 90 days, it might have had three price reductions. Plus, that's the time that, if you remember, we talked about more days on the market equal a bigger discount. That was number three, right? So not only have they had a couple price reductions, two or three at 90 days, but that's when they also start taking deeper discounts on properties. They got to get rid of it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And they also look at, remember I said smaller outside of major MSAs, look outside of major MSAs in Mm -hmm. the small towns. Mm -hmm. Well, the cool thing about that is in the small towns, there's not as many investors, not as many buyers, so they aren't getting as many bids. That's the reason that they're more flexible, right? That makes sense. That's the reason they're more flexible. So look for price reductions and back on the market. What does back on the market mean? What does back on the market? That means they've accepted someone's bid and they pulled it off the market, but then that person never closed. It might have been a week later. Maybe it was 30 days later when it was time to close, but they failed to close on the deal. Just like the one that we just threw back uh, last week or so, last week or two weeks ago. I mean, they pulled it off because we went under contract. We threw it back because it wasn't as good of a deal as we initially thought, so it showed back up. That's exactly right. So look for price reductions and back on the market. And the tenth and final strategy that I wanted to cover today is is less competition (laughs) on uninsured properties. Remember I said number seven, uninsured properties equal a bigger discount. However, there's also less competition on uninsured properties because by nature they need more work, right? right? So they need more work. So not as many people are going to bid on them. If you want to get a free copy of my latest book, HUD Homes Half Off, How to Buy HUD Houses for Pennies on the Dollar, give Candace a call, 877-LARRY-GO. She's also going to give you a copy of Getting Started in Real Estate Day Trading. 
proven techniques for buying and selling houses the same day using the internet, as well as some other stuff and junk, right? Stuff and junk. Yep. We've got some stuff and junk in there about asset protection, some stuff and junk that goes over our uh, exit strategies, filthy riches, um, and ultimate buying machine, which is uh, filthy riches, lease options, seller financing, ultimate buying machine <coughs> is um, wholesaling. So all of that stuff is in there as well. Um, you can give me a call, 877-LARRY-GO, to get the digital kit sent out to your email address or text the word B-R-A-G to 803-897-6063. We can chat about our upcoming three-day events, mentoring options, um, you scheduling a tour to come by and pick up the physical kit, anything and everything. Also remember to email info at bragradio.com with any questions. Thank you, Candace. <laughs> Tune in again next Saturday for Bragg Radio. As best-selling real estate investing author Larry Goins and co-host Candace teach you the latest techniques the pros use to make money in real estate. If you'd like more information about what Larry and Candace talked about on today's show, would like a free investor's kit, or to schedule a tour of the office, call 877-LARRY-GO. That's 877-527-7946. It's Bragg Radio. Be rich and generous on News Talk 1110-993-WBT.